Hi, I am Dr. Carrie Krieger from IndianFluteMusic.com, and I'm going to be discussing the structure of a composition. When we're playing ragas, we are almost certainly going to pl be playing compositions. Ragas have a lot of improvisation, but they also have some composed parts. So I'm going to be talking all about how the composed part is structured. First off, any raga can have an infinite number of compositions. For a raga, it's not a set composition. You could make a composition. I could make a composition. There are probably thousands of compositions already in existence for the better known ragas. When we're playing a raga, we will usually be playing one, two, or three compositions during the raga. After you understand how the compositions are structured and how the ragas work, you'll be able to compose your own compositions. So my goal is to be teaching you the fundamentals of ragas and then you could compose your own composition or you'd be able to learn a composition from me or another teacher or listen to a recording of your favorite artist playing your favorite raga and hopefully be able to figure out the composition and then play that. So the first thing we need to know about compositions is that they are set to a rhythm. They can be set to any rhythm. You could make for one raga, what I was playing when I started this session just now was the raga Bhairavi. One could play a composition in Bhairavi in a six beat rhythm, a seven beat rhythm, an eight beat rhythm, ten and a half beat rhythm, any type of rhythm. A rhythm has a specified number of beats. In Indian classical music, it's usually between six and sixteen. In North Indian classical music, between six and sixteen are the most common. A rhythm is a cycle. That means it's always repeating. So as an example, a six-beat rhythm like Dadra Tal, that's a six-beat Indian rhythm. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Just going on and on, repeating. One, two, three, four, five, six. Compositions in Indian music are relatively short. The compositions we play in classical North Indian music are usually between four and six lines total. Now you may be thinking, how long is a line? One line of music can usually be written on one line of paper. So that should give you some idea about the length of the line. It may take seven seconds, 12 seconds to play the line of music. So compare this to a Western symphony, which may be dozens of pages long. And from that, you can tell it's a lot easier to memorize an Indian classical composition than it is to memorize a Western symphony. One of our lines of composition is usually the length of one rhythmic cycle. So if we're playing a composition in a 16 beat rhythm, for example, then our line is going to be 16 beats long. So 16 beat rhythm like teen tall, da din din da da din din da da tin tin na na din din da. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I just went through two cycles. One cycle is just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's the length of one line of our composition. So here's how the compositions work. There's two halves. Let's look at the left half of what you see written here. And we see the astai on top and the antra on the bottom. Those are the two halves of the composition. The astai is usually from two to four lines long. The antra is usually from two to four lines long. If we break the astai down further, 
then we can do that by think of, thinking of the astai as having a gut. The gut is the first line. That's a very important line, and I'm going to go further into the details of each of these sections. The gut is the first line, and the manja is the remaining lines of the astai, so probably from one to three lines. So again, two halves of the composition. The first half is the astai, second half is the antra. And the astai is made of the gut and the manja. Okay, so the astai, the first half of the composition, it explores the lower notes, the low notes, from usually about low pa up to high sa. Remember, the first note of our scale is sa. So we're going from sa down a few notes to pa, maybe ma on the flute, if you can reach that far on your flute, depending on what kind of flute you have. And then we're going to go up usually to high saw or below that. Usually not above high saw though, occasionally. The main difference though, the second half of the composition is the entre. The entre, the whole goal is to go to the high notes. So it's exploring the higher notes and it almost always goes above high saw. Let's look at the astai further. As I said, the first line is the gut. The gut gets repeated over and over, more than any other line, and therefore the gut is the most important line of your composition. The gut is the line from which most of your improvisations will begin, and the line to which most of your improvisations will return. So you'll be playing the gut, and then you'll start to improvise from the gut, and then you'll return to the gut. That will happen many, many times during the course of the raga. The manja, which is the second part of the astai, the second line of the astai is the manja. And if there happens to be a third or a fourth line, those are also part of the manja. So basically, the first line of the astai is the gut, and any subsequent lines in the astai make up the manja. The manja explores the low notes. When you finish the manja, you return directly to the gut. So you don't go straight from the manja to the astai. Return to the gut. The gut is the most important line. You'll be coming back to the gut a lot. The antra, the goal, as I said before, is to show the high notes. The first line of the entre almost always prominently displays high sa. So when you're playing that first line of the entre, you are going to be showing the high sa, which is a very important note because it's precisely one octave above where we started, which was sa. More about the entre. The first line of the entre, it can be repeated multiple lines, similar to with our gut. And it can also serve as the starting point for improvisations and the point of return from those improvisations. In this case, though, the improvisations are going to focus on the high notes. We're in the entre, so our composition is high notes, and also our improvisations are focused in the high notes. The second and any subsequent lines of the entre usually go above high saw. So the first line of the entre, the goal is probably to show the high saw, the, following, the lines that follow it are going to go even higher. And the final line of the entre is usually going to descend to saw, so it's going to bring us back to where we probably started. And when the entre is complete, we're going to return directly to the gut. So as a review, let's look at this again. There's two halves of the composition, the astai, two to four lines, which is made up of a gut, which is the first line, and then the manja, which are the subsequent lines. And then there's the antra, which shows the high notes, generally two to four lines. Now you know a whole lot about how compositions 
are structured in Indian classical music, North Indian classical music, and eventually I'm going to be teaching you many different compositions so you'll get to know them a whole lot better, see them in action, hear them in action, and actually play them. Right now, what I'm going to do is finish by playing a composition in Bhairavi, the Rag Bhairavi, teen tall, 16 beat rhythm. What I'm going to do is play the gut twice. I'm going to play the manja once. The manja in this composition is only one line. And then I'm going to play the antra, which is a two line antra. I'm going to play the first line of the antra twice and then the second line of the antra just once. And then I'm going to return to the gut just once. Here goes. I'm going to turn on my tabla, 16 beat rhythm. I'm Kerry Krieger, IndianFluteMusic.com. I hope you enjoyed learning all about the structure of a composition.